Hey you guys, Natalie here and welcome back to It's a Good Life. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to set up a worm farm or a worm bin, however you wanna say it. However big your worm farm is, I'm gonna show you how to set it up today. If we haven't met yet, my name is Natalie. I'm a backyard farmer here in San Diego, California. Urban home setter, urban farmer, whatever you wanna call it. We grow food in the backyard and are learning how to do so each and every day, each and every season, as we steward our big regenerative farm dreams, hoping that one day very soon, we'll be on the farm. But for now, we make the most of it in our backyard, growing food in raised beds that I built myself. You can catch the video here. Uh, and we make all of our own nutrients on site using worms. This is our worm farm and we make, we make all of our nutrients on site for amending our beds for the most part using this worm farm setup. And today I'm going to show you how you can set up your own worm farm or worm bin. So like I said, this is our worm farm and I just finished setting it up. And today I wanna to invite you guys into the process and show you guys how I set up our worm bins from scratch. Now, whether you've got a smaller worm farm or a worm bin, or you've got a big old worm farm like this one, the same principles will apply to you. You really just need a few things to get started. So let's talk supplies. To set up your worm bin, you will need cardboard, browns, bedding, grit, worms, greens, and amendments if you feel so inclined. You'll also need a bin and some water that is free of chemicals and chlorine. And I'll show you later on in the video which amendments I prefer to use for our worm farm that help boost production and minerals and all of that good stuff. If you're a worm nerd or you're a wannabe worm nerd, go ahead and hit the like button down below. And while you're there, might as well hit the subscribe and the bell as well. Just saying. Just saying. <laughs> I've gone through the trouble of making you a little checklist here in my ebook. So if you are wanting to get started with worm farming, this ebook might be your best friend with getting started. It covers everything from supplies with checklists and, and shopping lists so you can shop directly online and just get everything straight shipped to you. Uh, setup, harvest, maintenance, and ways to use your castings tips as well as questions and answers in the back of the books. I hope this is a resource that proves really valuable to you. And it's what we'll be working out of for today as we set up our bins. To set up the bins, first we add a layer of cardboard and the cardboard is really there to prevent the worms from sneaking through and sneaking out of the bins. When you add worms to bins, they have a tendency to want to escape. It's sometimes a little hard for them to acclimate to their new home. And so you want to fortify your bins as much as possible to prevent them from escaping. And we found that cardboard works best, but you could also use several layers of newspaper or packing paper as well. Next up, we need to add some browns to the worm bin. And to do that, you can add anything from shredded up cardboard, shredded up newspaper, shredded up packing paper, shredded up envelopes, although you'll want to remove any glue or plastic particles or anything like that. I prefer to use leaves that I found in my backyard. They're free, they're readily available this time of year in fall. And I find that anything that is more natural tends to do a little bit better. So I lean towards using leaves as a brown material whenever possible. Next up to our worm bin, we are going to add some compost. Now the compost has organic material, which is really important for any kind of composting setup. A lot of people think, oh, well, you know, worms will make anything better. But in reality, worms exist in nature where the soil is already good because they have this symbiotic relationship with the nematodes and everything else that's going on inside the soil structure itself. So we can't just say, I'm just gonna add worms to the situation and it's going to be better. That's not really how it works. And so that's why it's important to add compost because you're gonna be adding a lot of organic material that way and it's going to help boost the microbiome of these worm bins. So we're gonna add our layer of compost. And I like to think of it as making a little bed for the worms, right? So this is their bedding. This is where they're starting off their life in the worm bin. Eventually everything will basically turn into castings, but this is, this is their start. And we want to be as hospitable and loving and kind to these little worms as we can. So we're going to make them a nice comfy bed made of some soft organic material, compost and soil. So now all that's left to do is add the worms to their bed. And then I like to include their grit here with them. And I'm adding grit in the form of coffee grinds, eggshells, and vermiculite. Grit is great for their digestion, which they need when they're first starting off in the bin. Uh, they actually have gizzards and several stomachs, so they need a lot of grit to help them process. That is part of the necessary components for digestion in worms. So it's important to include grit, which is why I include it here in bed with them <laughs> as a nice little 
gritty snack while they're sleeping in their beds, getting acclimated in their new home. And I'm adding just a handful to each bin. These are new worms. All of our old worms have already been added to our garden bed. So I went ahead and purchased some new ones from our local feed store. And I'm just adding a handful because under the right conditions, these worms will multiply pretty quickly. And that's what we're hoping for. A nice healthy worm bin with lots of new worm babies very soon. Pro tip, you can get coffee grounds from your local coffee shop. I got mine from our local Starbucks. Starbucks has a program that they've had around now for years where they give out grounds to local gardeners. But if you establish a relationship with another local business who needs to get rid of their coffee grounds, it's a win-win for the coffee shop and for you. Good for them reducing their carbon footprint. Good for you benefiting your garden. Then, like I said, I want you to think of it as a bed. We're gonna cover those worms up with some soil, make sure they're nice and comfortable, not too hot, not too cold, nice and comfortable in their new environment. And I'm just adding a little bit of compost and soil to cover them up and protect them from the sunlight because worms don't like sun, they're photosensitive. So when you pull out some a handful of worms and you see them wriggling in your hands, uh, it's, they prefer not to be exposed to direct sunlight. So we wanna make sure that they are nice and covered up and comfortable in their new home. And I like to do so by adding a little bit more compost and soil. So next up, it's time to add some food scraps. On behalf of worms and worm farmers everywhere, I'd like to welcome you to the first ever episode of Cooking for Your Worms. In today's episode, we'll show you how to make a worm charcuterie board. Today's stars of the show include what went bad in my fridge. We've got pears, apple, avocado, a worm's favorite food, bananas, a worm's second favorite food, apple cores, broccoli, and eggshell. Because nothing says I love you worms like slightly rotten fruits and veggies and the smell of broccoli fart. Now here's some things that you should know about red wigglers and food scraps in a worm bin. First off, red wigglers are surface dwellers. That means that they're gonna wanna hang out towards the top of the worm bin. Unlike things like earthworms or European night crawlers, which are all other kinds of worms that you can find in the garden or use for composting. But for my purposes, I prefer to use red wigglers and it's what I have linked down below. It's what I recommend for getting started. Would I love to experiment with European night crawlers one day? Yeah, maybe, but for now, red wigglers have worked really well for me. Keeping that in mind that their nature is to stay towards the surface of the worm bins, it's important that we leave their food there for them so that that's where they wanna hang out and eat. <laughs> Contrary to popular belief, another thing you should know is that worms don't eat just food scraps. I definitely was under the impression that I could just give the worms all my food scraps in the beginning, and I was very wrong. Worms eat a lot more than just food scraps. They are actually going to consume pretty much everything that's in the bin that we're adding today. And eventually, all of what you see will be broken down into worm castings. So it's important to know that don't overfeed your worms. We talk about it in the maintenance section of my worm book, but just a heads up to you, don't overfeed your worms. You actually don't wanna to add too many food scraps in the beginning because you can overwhelm the bin, you can invite, invite fruit flies, you can invite rodents. So we're gonna start very minimally here in the beginning with just a few food scraps, some of their favorites mentioned already in the cooking for your worms section. Um, they really love bananas, avocados, apple cores, things like that. After the better, uh, pears do really well as well. Happen to have some broccoli, so I'm adding that too. But again, you wanna add these sparingly, especially if you're not starting off with a lot of worms. Another thing to keep in mind is that once your bin is established, you should be able to add more, more food because you'll have more worms. Another thing to keep in mind is you don't wanna to add too much food and invite your local pests and rodents. So it's important to not overfeed your bin in the beginning and cover it up, which is the next step. I always like to cover up the food with compost or soil or browns, just anything to kind of basically deter pests and fruit flies. And pro tip, if you are having fruit fly problems with your bin, it's probably too wet and you probably need more browns. And so I always recommend throw some browns on there, stop feeding, stop watering your bins, add some little fruit fly traps around your bin, 
and you should see a dramatic decrease in the issue with fruit flies. Speaking of moisture, as you've seen me do throughout this process, it's important to keep the bin moist. Not too moist, but in the beginning when you're getting it established, it's okay to have it on the wetter side of things and allow it to kind of air out as the week goes on. You can kind of eyeball it as time goes on. The goal is to have it about the consistency of a wrung out sponge. That is the eventual goal. So Goldilocks, right? Not too wet, not too dry, somewhere right in between. And on the note of moisture and water, like I was saying, you wanna make sure that you're using water that's been filtered. We have an RV filter on our drip lines and hoses now to basically eradicate the issue of chlorine and pesticides and chemicals that are in city water. And that is it. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video all about how to set up a worm bin. And if you did, a really easy way to support us for free and show us the love is leave us a comment, hit that like button, subscribe if you haven't already, and do hit the bell as well so I actually show up in your feed when I post a video, which right now is about three times a week until our little one arrives. Thank you so much for joining us today. I am so enjoying getting to know you guys. It's been really fun seeing so many new faces here. Thank you so much for all the love and support, and um, I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.